Dave, wake up and jam. And by jam, you mean alchemize, of course. Whoa. Your house is huge suddenly. Anyway, let's just get this party started. Dave, combine sunglasses and iPhone. You make a pair of eye shades. This one was really obvious because future Dave had a pair, but he took them with him when he prototyped himself. But now you have a pair too, so that's cool. Dave, combine timetables and computer. You make the turn top. Convenient computing on the go, sort of like you have with your eye shades, but with all your important files and apps on there, not to mention Spurb. Plus, maybe it has some weird time powers? You have no idea. You have to mess with it later. Combine Puppet Tux with Smuppet. You upgrade the Puppet Tux Future Dave made. He probably made it by combining one of your bro's badass marinette suits with your shirt and scaling it up to fit. That's how you would have done it anyway. You add a Smuppet to the mix to make a softer, more stylish red plush Puppet Tux. It's like walking around in snuggly pajamas. Action pajamas. Dave, combine Broken Khaled Scratch and Ruby Contraband. You combine a couple more items you got from future Dave's loot stash. The broken form of Khaled Scratch and some Ruby Contraband. Whatever the hell that is. The resulting item costs a fortune. You have no idea what it is. Dave. Preview item with Holopad. You momentarily reconfigure your Alchemata upgrades to make use of the Holopad extension. You pop the card in the slot and check it out. The combination will produce the Broken Scarlet Ribitar. Now combine Whole Khaled Scratch and Ruby Contraband. Out of curiosity, you try it again with the whole sword. You dial back Khaled Scratch's little turntable, rewinding the sword to a point in its history before it was broken. You then combine it with the red frog thingy and show the complete Scarlet Ribitar. But there's no way you could afford to make that yet. It costs even more now. Maybe you'll stick to combining items around your house for now, rather than stuff from your future Silidex. It'll be less confusing that way. And probably less expensive. Dave. Combine Shitty Sword and Hella Jeff Drawing. You use one of your bro's really shitty swords from the fridge and a printout of Hella Jeff to make a... sword. This thing is so unspeakably shitty, you are having a hard time even holding it. Now, combine Snoop Dogg Photo and Mini Air Conditioner and Khaled Scratch. You make the Snoop Dogg Snow Cone Machete. When foes drop it like it's hot, just turn up the Blizz Nizzle Nozzle so they chiz lax for Rizzle. Dave, combine Skateboard and Hella Jeff Drawing. You make Unreal Air. And there it goes. It's ridiculous what kind of air this thing is getting. Dude, come get a ruler, check this out. Yeah. It's not coming back. Dave, make another one. You just make another one, and quickly stash it in a card so it can't escape from above. Dave, combine Game Bro Magazine and timetables. You turn back the clock and make a vintage Game Bro. You think you remember this one from your bro stash. It's a classic. Now combine Batarang and Midnight Crew poster. You make a whole pile of Suterangs because they are really cool and pretty cheap. Dave, combine plush puppet tux and midnight crew poster. You make four aces suited. You aren't really sure which one you like better. The red one is softer, or the black one is sort of stiff and starchy. Anyone wearing this suit is all business. Maybe you'll switch it up as your mood dictates. Now, combine plush puppet tux and felt poster. This would make some felt duds, if you had whatever that green grist is. Dave, combine smuppet and felt poster. You make a jutting out an impudent felt plush. You do an acrobatic fucking pirouette off the handle and into his heart. And he into yours. 
Now, combine dead things in amber, conditional and style, with Smuppet. You make a fine mutant Smuppet encased in amber. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, Dave, combine dead things in amber, conditional or style, with Smuppet. For the sake of science, you conditional or combine them instead of conditional and combine. You make an amber mutant Smuppet abomination. So cool. Now this is how you make shit work. Egbert and Lalonde should be taking notes. Now Dave, combine Fetus in a jar and Mr. T puppet. You make the foam fetal Mr. T in a jar. Another backbreaking victory for science. You're looking pretty chill with your new freak show entourage. The underlings all look kind of put off by it though. You're kind of weirding them out. Dave, combine camera and capture log card. You make the captureroid camera. You can use it to snap a ghost image of any object without capture logging it. Spit it out on a brand new capture log card every time. Could be a useful way to take a large inventory of anything you encounter without cluttering up your Silidex. Also for grabbing codes for stuff you can't ordinarily pick up. Dave, take photo of self. You take one of your patented, ironic, cool guy self-portraits. Man, so cool. That's really all there is to say on the matter. Dave, combine fetus in a jar with self-portrait photo. That would apparently make Dave's brain in a jar. Gross. It costs a king's ransom though, because of course, the organ is virtually inimitable. Doesn't stop you from captureroiding its hologram, though. Dave, captureroid the hologram of your own brain. Okay, that's probably the weirdest thing you've ever done. But okay. Dave, combine brain and sweet bro and hella Jeff drawing and captureroid camera. You make the Sabadger fire. Finally, something useful. It costs you minus 1,000 units of artifact grist. Dave, try it out. it automatically prints out a sweet bro and hella jeff comic in some way related to whatever you take a picture of this should save you a lot of time specifically the five minutes it takes you to draw a comic you're a busy guy now dave make copies of rose's journals can't forget the most important thing you came up here to make gotta be getting your snoop on Dave, take a look. One book is titled Meow, the other is titled Complacency of the Learned. Gee, you wonder what could be in Meow? Dave, read it. To no surprise at all, this book is full of more Meow letters. Looks like Rose is totally nuts. What else is new? You'll guess you'll try out the other book. Looks like it's just some sort of creative writing project. Now Dave, read Complacency of the Learned. 
Frigglish bothered his beard as if unkinking a hitch in a long silk windsock. A more pedestrian audience would parse the exhibit as nervous compulsion, behavior to petition contempt among the reasonable. He was, however, not surrounded by the reasonable, but the wise, a distinction in men that would forever be the difference in history's garland of treasured follies. As a matter of fact, his catter of fellow wizards were all putting similar moves on their beards as well. The practice would invince thoughtfulness, sagacity even, if they didn't do it all the time. Standing in line at the bank, shooing squirrels from bird feeders, few occasions were safe. Zasserpan inspected the clue. A single piece of evidence cradled in his coriaceous old man palms. It was a human bone, not striking in the tale it told alone so much as that told by the thousands like it festooning the marshy soil of the mass grave. The grisly expanse bore the texture of a decadent dessert like one of Smarney's formidable custard trifles wobbled out on wheels for the holidays, to the dismay of a small nation. "'You're certain of this?' asked Frigglish. Despite what he was doing with his beard, he was, in fact, immersed in meaningful contemplation. "'I am afraid I am becoming more so with each terrible tick groused by that gaudy timepiece slung around your neck.' In case it wasn't clear, Frigglish wore a clock Zasserpan didn't care for. It was magic. The massacre of Sir Skenelf was not as written. What has you convinced in the hand of our disciples in this blackness? Executus chimed in. I believe. I. A fat face stammered, his eyes darting with the guilt of a thief in the throes of an unraveling alibi. I can summon a more pressing line of inquiry. No, Smarney, nobody was in the mood for a sticky bunt loaf just now. Zasserpan's ears fell insubstantial to any line of inquiry, pastry-oriented or otherwise. His abstruse contour carved a pondering shape in the fog, carpeting centuries dead. His eleven contemporaries, too, embraced the muted consternation of their great predicant scholar. Few wizards kept sharper adumptratives or read them with such lucidity. When Zasserpan treated men with silence, it was seldom unrepaid by the wise and reasonable alike. It was harrowing to entertain. Zasserpan, the learned, storied complacency of wizards, was marked for grander descendants. Disciples hand-picked, vetted by Ockite the Bonafide and tested by Gastro the Munificent. The twelve sweetest, most studious children a pair of elderly eyes could give their sparkle. Not the ragged gutter snipes so oft harvested by the common obscenity, those vituperative little beggars with hearts too corrupt as dropped bananas brown, that these chosen youngsters would turn was not merely unthinkable, but something of a roundhouse to the temporal bones of the upper indifference's high chamber of soft-skulled prophets. His wisdom-savaged brow pruned further with recount of his many lessons to would-be successors, lessons to advance humanity's elucidation and prosperity, an outcome this bleak trail now painfully obviated. There were few puzzles the learned could not suspend and dissect in the recondite manifold beneath his extremely expensive pointy hat. Daring to pitch his cherished pupils in with the foul melange of history's robes, the heretofore abstract scourge that built up civilizations with ungodly magic and tore them down with joyful malice would prove an intellectual trespass to make his calcium-deficient bones quake. And more daring yet was the only question that now mattered. Could a bunch of bearded, scraggly old men in preposterous outfits hunt them down? He didn't have an answer. Only a simple observation so blunt and uncharacteristically jejun, for the lauded stage it was breathtaking in its self-evidency. We're going to need more wands. Wow. Think of something better. This wizard story seems really involved and kind of confusing. 
You have to save your place and dig into it later. And then maybe ask Rose what the hell the deal with it is. Dave, go get a bookmark. You return to your room in search of a bookmark. Oh, hey! Finally a use for that pointless juice-stained beta that will never serve any purpose, past or future. You drop it on the John in case you're looking for some reading material later. Dave, check on Rose. Now Dave, pester. Whoa, why are you burning your wizard fanfiction? I'm not. This book contains a genetic code. Oh, okay. Then why are you burning that? The gods from the furthest ring asked me to. That's some dumb wizard thing you just made up, or something to do with tentacle monsters. I can't keep track of what you like anymore. How did you know I wrote a story about wizards anyway? John told me. He was all snooping around your room while you were asleep, and I was like, no man, don't. So not cool. Then he was like, haha, <laughs> dude, check it out. This book is full of wizard slash. And I was like, I don't even want to know. This is such a crazy violation of privacy. Hmm, this story sounds suspicious. Do you want me to chew him out about it? I will, because that was so outrageous. I don't know where he got off being like that. No, I don't actually mind. Too bad I missed him. I thought you hated wizards. What's the deal with that? Oh, I like wizards. What I don't like is my mother's obsession with feigning interest in them to antagonize me. Oh man, that's so messed up that you think that. She probably digs wizards for real, just like you, and you're blowing shit out of proportion like pretty much always. You and she could probably have been chatting up how awesome wizards were this whole time, but no. You're probably burning your nut job meow book to spite her too, aren't you? No, I told you. It's one of the gene sequences locked in my subconscious. The gods say it's critical to destroy it. Oh yeah, I thought that was a joke. When did they say that? When I was asleep. You mean when we were dancing and stuff in our dreams? Yes. When I flew to your tower, I heard them. They're far above, in the dark sky. I've never seen or heard these things in my dreams. Aren't you often distracted by music and puppets? Uh, yeah. Have you ever looked into the sky without your shades? No, what a ridiculous question. Maybe you should try it sometime. You're the prince of the moon. I'm sure they've been meaning to seek a royal audience. What do all these dots mean? Dunno. Anyway, yeah, I guess I'll do that. Get some sky monsters to boss me around sounds cool. Dave Sprite, also Pester. So, really, why are you burning that? I just explained this to other Dave. Do I have to explain everything to you twice now? No, I know. I'm using Dave's spare computer. I saw the whole conversation through his Pester Trump account. Oh, I see. So instead of having to double explain, I merely have to put up with being double spied upon. What a relief! I just mean, you didn't burn that book in the future. That book was completely pointless. I know. But now it's not. You appear to make it relevant by traveling to the past. So, does that mean the sleeping thing worked? You remember the future? I remember some things. Okay, cool. So why is the cat code so terrible now? I don't know. But the gods were pretty emphatic about it. Well, okay, I guess it's done. But why are you so sure they're right? Have you ever known them to be wrong? I guess not. But they sort of freak me out. I mean, listening to gross space mutants all day isn't my idea of an awesome time. Especially the ones that sing. Oh, God. Is that why you always kept the music turned up? No, I flip out to ill jams because they kick ass, obviously. I guess we'll chalk another riddle up in the solved column. Yeah, case the fuck closed. Are you talking to future me? Yes. Okay, I'm out of the loop again. Between you taking orders from Dream Beasts and Birdwing me with, like, future secrets, I'm doing some sort of spectacular fucking jackknife up the loop and getting a wink and a nod from Barack Obama. I'm coming upstairs. Okay. Dave, chill with Dave Sprite. So, it was pretty funny how I made a copy of Rose's evil book right before she burned it, and now she doesn't know about it. I know, it's crazy what kind of foresight this guy has. I'm telling you, coincidences like that are unreal. They don't even happen, most of the time. The best thing about how I did that is how it in no way will ever come back to bite us in the ass, ever. Dude, our shit is safe. So safe? 
Gonna sleep pretty sound tonight with that big fucking payload of safety you just got dropped on us. Gonna be all hugging my pillow and shit, grinning like a goddamn bear full of honey. Safer than some Flintstones vitamins in a bottle. Keep twisting, Junior. All you get is clicks. Asshole thinks his candy doesn't even know he just stepped on a security rake and got a face full of fucking safety. Yeah. Anyway, guess I'll go back down and bring that book. Yeah, alright. Dave, go back in time and stop the thief! It looks like you already tried that. Whoever took those books was a pretty cold-blooded dude. You'll figure you'll call it on the time travel for a while. Don't want to see Dave corpses just start to pile up. Especially if one of them winds up being you. Dave, throw yourself out the window. You ditch the body before Jade sees it. That would probably freak her out. Now John, press a button on the control panel. You push one of the nearby buttons. It activates the upper right monitor. The view is locked on to a particular location on Earth at a particular date and time. Whoever was in the lab appears to have recently calibrated this device. John, examine monitor. The monitor displays a town on the west coast of the United States. It appears to be your old neighborhood. But there is a factory there you do not recognize. The date is December 1st, 1995. A few months before you were born. John, zoom in. An old woman is escorted by her son on a lovely day. A target has been locked over the gentleman's mother. A meteor overhead looms unnoticed. They witness the destruction of the facility. Collateral damage to a corporation owned by a renowned billionaire explorer. A mystery begins.